folks back again with another tutorial uh, this is going to be over the compute slash math instructions which you can just say math instructions is fine with me uh, but we're going to be going over a few of those uh, so we can uh, do things a little bit easier and uh, also it'll, it'll be some of the things we're going to be do, doing in the labs pretty soon so let's get started I've already got my project set up uh, with the emulator uh, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and add a run. And the first one I want to start with here is this add instruction. Okay, but it just should be fairly simple to when you think of it is the add instruction is going to take source A and source B and add it together. So let's just say, and I'm just going to make these up. This right here, I'm just going to give it adder source A. And it's going to be a dent because we're going to have uh, whole numbers. Okay, and then I'm going to say adder source B. Again, it's a dent. And then I'm going to say adder destination. That way they're called exactly what they are here in the program. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finalize this. <clears throat> and 0 plus 0 is 0. So if I was to put a 1 in there, as you can see, 1 plus 0 is 1. If I was to put a 1 in the B source, it's 1 plus 1 is 2. So I believe that there is fairly simple. And again, I don't even have to... Uh, activate it you know from I don't have to have anything in front of it to make that do what I want I mean we we will in this class but I'm just wanting to show you that if I just change the numbers if this number changes to and this number changes you know whatever they are whatever these values are added together it gives you the destination okay so in our projects uh, the way we're going to be using that is I'm going to show you this. Oh, I need to go into edit mode. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, an add. So I'm just going to put in here. <clears throat> Let's just say it's a, uh, a push button. So I'm just going to say input 1PB again. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want... Uh, this right here to basically add to itself. So what I want to do is I want to take the destination and actually make it one of the sources. Okay. I know this don't make sense, but it will here shortly. So let's just say if I add source one to the destination, So I know this right here is uh, 1 plus 0, it should be 1, but until this right here is activated, it is not going to put a 1 in there. So basically what it's saying is that source A, which is a 1, is going to be added to the destination, which is source B. So it's going to be 1 plus 0, and it should go to 1 then the destination should go up by one. Then it's going to go one plus one is two. And so that means that every time that we toggle this input, and this is one of the ones where I said that you needed a one shot. See how every time I turn it on, it just sits there and keeps on going. So this is where we want a one shot. I need to go back into edit mode. You'd think I know that by now, but I'll say I don't. So we're going to do a one shot. We're going to make this a dent. Then we're going to go back and we're going to put in a dot zero. Okay. And we're going to go ahead in the destination and make that go back to a zero. Okay. So now when we toggle, we should be only getting one at a time. Okay, so that means every time that an input or a timer or whatever happens, 
you're going to count up by one. Okay? And what I'm meaning by that, and that's one of the things we'll be doing when we get in uh, to some other stuff, uh, and it's part of the sequencing, is that I'll just go ahead and show you now. <clears throat> I'm just going to set it for one second, which is 1,000 milliseconds. Okay, so let's just say if I've done this, I'm sitting here pulsing, and then I can also bring that down to here. Okay, so now, therefore, every one second, I'm going to count up by one. So that's that's pretty nice to be able to do this right here and then be able to sequence through things because see we can take this number and put it into our uh our sequence and uh, actually move uh with compare instructions through a set of sequences by adding and then what we'd want to do you know depending on you know how many steps you have in a process you know once it got to that you'd want to uh, reset that back to a zero or move a zero back into its position and I'll show you that right now uh, so let's just say that <clears throat> once it gets up to let's just say when uh, this right here is equal to 10 then we want to one shot And we want to move a zero back into this destination. Okay. So when I do this, but now what we're going to have to do is because I'm so far above that now, is I'm going to have to reset it back down to here. And as you you should be able to see that once I get up to ten. I should one shot in and make it go back down to zero. So this is the way that I would sequence through things uh, a little easier like this right here with with an adder. And then you can always put in a subtractor to make it go back the other way. Okay, so that's the other thing is let's go ahead and do a subtract instruction. So I mean it's going to be pretty well the same except different <laughs> so, so to speak so let's go ahead and uh, get, get us some new tags here so we're gonna say subtract source a it's a dent that's good we're going to subtract source B and we're gonna say subtract uh, destination. Make sure they're all dense. They should be automatically. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finalize this. So if we was to say, and the way this reads is that source A minus source B. So, you know, if we try doing this, it's going to give us a negative because zero, if you have a zero and you t subtract one, you're going to get a negative one. So I just want you to, to make sure that it does matter uh, which one you have where. Uh, just like if I put a one there, it's gonna give us a, a one as a, uh, as a value, as a destination value. So again, it's pretty much the same, just like regular subtraction. Uh, and that's all it's gonna do is give you a va the value between the two. Just make sure that you know that the source A should be uh, larger than the source B unless you are intending on getting negative values. And it's okay if you do. If that's what you need for your process or whatever it is, then that's fine. Uh, I'm not gonna say anything about it. But uh, for, the, for the class, uh, the, I don't know of anything that we do that has to go into the negatives. Okay, but just like up here, where we are 
cycling down or up a scale, you know, counting from zero to, to 10, then here we, we could do the exact opposite. We could actually go from uh, 10 down to zero and then start back at 10 and work our way down. And that's the way that I like working my pilot light sequencing uh, is using an adder and a subtractor and based off which way this, uh, the uh, selector switch is positioned is which one I use. If I'm, you know, in our class, if I selected to the left, which was making one input, I would go in reverse and keep reversing and looping, and the other way I would go uh, the, forward the forward way. Any anyways, this right here is what I like doing uh, is this. So as you can see, I've not got anything out in front of it. So again, if we do like I've done with the adder, and we actually take and put an XIC out here. And we got, call it input 2 PB just for giggles for now. Put that out there. We're going to go ahead and put a one shot in. Shot 2. Oh, and also what we want to do is we want to uh, subtract one away from uh, wh whatever um, so let's just see we would want to subtract one away from this destination each time basically like what we're doing up top is that we're taking one away from itself so let's just let me put a one in there and what we have to do here though is that we would always have to instead of starting at uh, <clears throat> uh, at zero we would actually start at like the 10 or whatever wherever basically what we would do is we would leave off where this was at so what we would do is we would take you know stop the forward progression of the numbers and then wherever it was at whether it was at seven or eight or nine or whatever or we'd make sure it got to the end of its cycle before you could actually go backwards. We would do that, okay? But this right here is just to show you that, okay, if we had a, uh, a 10 in there and we toggled this bit, hmm. oh, okay, I see what it is. So we actually need to, I didn't take my own advice. We're just going to put a hard-coded number in there. So it needs to be like that. Because a bigger number has to be on the top, if you remember what I was saying. So every time that we hit, then basically we go down by one number. And like I said, then you put conditions in front of that there to make it uh, available to where it will subtract, or you make it you you make it to where it can't be subtracted and it goes forward. And you just move those same numbers in, and you can move those numbers into the sequence uh, tag, like in the other videos. And you can just move that number back and forth and make things happen, uh, you know, in a reverse fashion if you want. But anyways. There's always reasons to do subtraction. There's always reasons to do additions. Other than that, there, there's a lot of times that you'll have to figure values. Like in uh, one of our uh, uh, labs we'll be doing, you'll be adding uh, time together, you know, to, you know, seconds together to make minutes and things like that. And that's why we'll have to do some uh, multiplication and some dividing. So let's go ahead and look at one of those. So I'm going to add another rung in. Compute math. So let's go ahead and do divide or multiply, excuse me. Again, all it is is source A, source B. So I'm going to go ahead and make a. Again, it's irrelevant what you what tags these are. You know, just as long as it's the tags that you're wanting to multiply together. Uh, that's that's it. It don't have to be made up like this. It can be values of, of anything. So let's just say that, 
you know, you're trying to convert minutes to hours or hours to minutes or whatever, you'd either do multiplication or divide depending on which way you're going. So let's just say that, okay, multiply. Okay, so we're gonna say multiply destination. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finalize that. So zero times zero is zero. Okay. So 60 times zero is zero. Okay. So, I mean, all it does is takes the source A and multiplies it by the source B. And now, like I said, those numbers can be coming in from different places. Now, just like uh, one of the best things that we, or one of the biggest things that I know just right offhand that we use multiplication for uh, is uh, when we start writing tag data uh, to the HMI, uh, we know that the, uh, and back and forth, so sometimes we'll actually have, uh, you know, something come in and it'll say uh, one second. Okay, so the, the tag from the HMI will say one second, but guess what? In order for us to write it into a timer, you know, we would have to times it by a thousand in order to get the correct amount of time in milliseconds. So that's one of the things that you could do. There's other ways of getting it in. You could just write to the, the, the preset. But sometimes what I'm getting at is that you have to manipulate the numbers that you're bringing in from another source. And these are, and the multiplication and division is just one of the ways to do it. So anyways, it's just a matter of getting the instruction, the correct instruction, whether or not you need to multiply or divide or add or subtract or whatever. And it's source, source A uh, and source B. That's all it is. Just make sure that in adding, it doesn't matter if it's the uh, bottom or top one. You know, you could reverse them and it wouldn't matter. Uh, the subtract, it does matter. You want the larger number on top, unless you want to go into the negatives. And then in multiplication, it doesn't matter. You can go either way. Okay. And then we'll go and we'll do a divide instruction. Again, you're going to see source A, source B. So, and you don't have to make tags. Let me just show you that the only tag that you have to make is this destination tag. So let's just say uh, divide destination. Okay, well, we can call this right here. Let's just say if, uh, So you can see the source A, just like in the subtract, needs to be larger than the source B. So, I mean, you can put in hard-coded numbers like this, but normally you may only have one of them that is hard-coded. So let's just say that if I did, uh, and there's 60 seconds in a minute, and I showed that I had a uh, 180 seconds left. Let me go ahead and um, this is a, a tag like you'd say you see something like in time in seconds. Okay, and that tag let's just say that it showed on the HMI. You know that's a tag coming in from the HMI that's got 180 seconds in it. But you wanted you needed to know what it was in minutes in the processor. So this right here is one of the ways that you can get that data in to, to minutes is by doing a divide and vice versa. So sometimes you may need to go the other way and that's why you do a multiply and then send that to the HMI for a display. So we'll be doing a lot of multiplication and dividing. And like I said, if you get, if you, if you multiply when you should have divided or divided when you should have multiplied, then it's easy enough just to change the uh, uh, instruction and replace the, the tags with the correct tags. And like I said, this multiply source A is not t a typical one. It just, I'm just trying to put it in here. This is part of the multiply instruction, source A and source B. Uh, it doesn't mean that it has to be like this right here. Normally, if it uh, has anything to do with HMI, I'll put HMI in the front of the tag so that I know it is something that is either being uh, 
that is data coming from the HMI or being written to the HMI. Uh, I, I like knowing that. So it's a lot easier to, for me when I go into controller tags to kind of manipulate that and kind of look in there and know where my stuff is without having to look through things. Uh, either way, it just makes it easier for me. But anyways, that there is fairly simple. Uh, the only other one that we'll be using, well, there'll actually be two other ones. So let's go ahead and look at a uh, modulo. Uh, so this right here is going to be, let me go ahead and bring in another run. Okay, and all this right here does is it's, uh, it's the same thing as dividing, except for I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to uh, use these numbers here okay and I'm going to just say modulo destination create okay so this says zero so the difference between it's the same thing as the divide except for the divide gives you a remember a den is a whole number not decimals so if I was to put 185 seconds in here, you would only get the whole number. So you'd, it'd be three minutes, right? So if you was to take 185 divided by 60, you'd get three whole minutes, but there would still be five seconds left over. So in one of the labs that we do, this is, this is very crucial because this is, is the remainder. So basically this leaves the whole number off and only gives you the remainder of what's left over. So 185 is divided by 60 is three, what you can see right here. And then this right here is what's left over. So let's just say 221 seconds. Okay, it's three minutes and 41 seconds. You got 350 or 360, let's just say that right there. Okay, that right there is even. Uh, 350. Okay, that's three, five minutes and 50 seconds. So when we do this mixer program, you're gonna see that, uh, you know, we're gonna be timing down how long these mix cycles are, and we're gonna be doing it in seconds because they don't run for like a whole lot of time, so we do it in seconds because some cycles are only, you know, uh, 15 seconds long or something like that. And instead of doing it in like, you know, trying to figure out, you know, uh, like a quarter of a second and, you know, maybe it's 10 seconds, you know, it's a sixth of a second or something like that. We don't put it in minutes in the screen, you know, and try to get people to put in decimal, you know, 1.17 minutes or anything like that. So that's the reason why we do it in seconds because it's a little more granular and that, but, but we need to be able to see certain things. So, but we display the time remaining in minutes. So it may be uh, no minutes and, you know, 50 seconds left, right? But we'll do everything in seconds is, is how you put the stuff in. But this is how you'll display the stuff back out and get it into your program. And so just just so that you know. So that right there is how we add. And a little bit of an example of why we add and subtract and multiply, divide, and a modulo. And remember, a modulo is very similar to a divide because you are dividing. Divide gives you a whole number. Modulo gives you the remainder of a division. Okay. Uh, the last one we're going to go over is a compute statement. And a compute statement is basically where you can actually uh, just add an expression. So let's say, okay, I'm going to say compute destination. Okay. Now this expression can is you got to always start off with an, a parentheses, and within this parentheses is where you would make your statement. Okay, so we can either make new tags or we can uh, go browse for tags. So if we wanted to say uh, the same the same thing as uh, let's just say if we do if we take the The divide destination, right? And we add it to the 
modulo destination. Oh, I did. I didn't double click the one. Divide destination plus. Look up again. The modulo destination. And then let's just say, and then we, so what that should do is give us <clears throat> the total amount of time. And let's just say, and then we can divide that by 10, let's just say. But you gotta put the first, it's almost like uh, just in regular math, uh, the first argument Right here, you'll see divide, and then you, so you're gonna divide destination plus the modulo destination. So that's the first argument, so you put that in parentheses, and then you would either add something else to it, subtract something from to it, divide, or, or whatever from there. So now, if we go ahead and finalize that, so it'll give us a five. So what that's doing, let's see what the divide destination is. So that's a, a five, okay, plus 50, Yeah, and it's only going to give us a whole number because, uh, again, it's in a dent. So, and there's one thing I want to try uh, as we, so let me do this right here because I'm not for sure if we can do this or not. So for giggles, we're going to try it in this tutorial. I want to see, and we may not be able to do it, and guess what? That'll be fine. I just want to see if we can actually write that as and change that from a dent and actually get the to the decimal. So new tag. So that's going to be because I've never tried that. So and I'm just going to see if we can do a real create. Okay, then we're okay. So we got a point, so we can go to the decimal. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and backspace that out and we're going to go to the tags we're going to say divide destination plus the modulo destination okay what did we do before we divided by 10 i believe okay then we can finalize that oh yeah and we can so we can go uh, and we can actually get the decimal which will give us five point five is what it goes in there that don't mean 5.5 .5 minutes it just means 5.5 .5. uh but anyways that's something good to know that you can actually uh go to a reel and a reel or a float can give you a, a decimal point so if you need something down a, with a decimal point because you need to know those fractions uh then you can do that out there to get that uh, so that's something good to know because uh, i'm about positive you cannot do that out there in any of these uh forms here that you can only use whole numbers dense can't use reels or floats, but so that there would be a good reason to use a compute statement uh, in order to get that kind of value out. Uh, also, uh, you can uh, add or subtract or everything all in one statement instead of doing it in two or three, because here you would have to, you know, let's just say if we had to add something first, then multiply it, then divide back out of it, then, you know, you would have three separate, uh, instructions instead of being able just to put it into one. So there is a place to use compute instructions and a place to use the other ones. So whichever one is more convenient is fine with me. Uh, but this right here concludes the video on the math instructions. So uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.